While walking down a memory lane of past so long ago, oh Satan came right by my side, making me feel low. He brought up thoughts and hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. He said, you're undeserving, cause I know where you've been. I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest secrets that you would never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all those things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags. My goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you've said to me.
You may be seated, and uh, we'll receive a Sunday morning tithes and offerings, and uh, he's worthy. We don't give to try to repay him, because we could never repay him, but what we do is we, we give as a token of our appreciation. We give as, uh, as a response that we're grateful for what he's done for us. And uh, amen. I ask Colton, if you don't pray over the offering, son. Lord, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we just thank you for this time. 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 Appreciate that piano and organ playing. We'll have Miss Anna's going to come sing for us this morning. You pray for her as she sings.
praise the Lord uh, for all the talent that God has blessed us here uh, with here at Calvary and for some young people that are willing to get up and serve the Lord. And uh, it takes courage and it takes faith to get up and sing and uh, thank God for those that's willing uh, to walk in, uh, walk in that path, do that. And uh, I want to remind you of something. At Calvary, the altars are always open. And uh, you don't have to wait till the end of the service. Just want you to know, uh, if you need to pray, you, you come down to the altar. And uh, you want to get, get a hold of God uh, any time is a good time. Here, you pray for Miss Leslie and her family as they sing. Ain't that a pretty sight? Family. <clears throat> I felt a little something right there. Family serving God together. Amen. I, there ain't nothing I'd rather do. I, I, hold on just. There ain't nothing I'd rather do with my family than serve God with my. I mean, I'd like to go to Disney World. I would. And I'd love to do it with them. I'd like, there's a, but there ain't nothing in this world I'd rather do with my family than serve the Lord together. Amen. You, you pray for Miss Leslie and her kids. You pray. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle along, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. This morning, Luke chapter number eight. Appreciate all of us singing. Appreciate the choir working hard, learning new songs, and uh, Amen. Luke chapter number eight try to share with you what God has put on our hearts. 
We'll read, we'll read several verses this morning, try to get the setting. And, and uh, I've, I've been thinking about this, it's been on my heart. And I, I, I don't apologize for the way I preach. I, I'm just me, that's just the way I do, it's just what I am, uh, by God's grace. But I, I thought this, if all you ever hear is the strength of my voice, and all you ever see is the energy with which we preach, then you've got no help. But if we can communicate, see, God's called us to preach, and that means that means to communicate. See, the help is not in me or in the way I preach. The help is in the one that we preach about. The help is in the truth, and it's my desire to make sure that I communicate truth to you because you need truth. I need truth. And uh, you pray for us this morning. Um, what you need in your life is some answers. What I need in my life is some answers. And uh, Luke chapter number 8, and uh, we'll read, we're going to read the first 15 verses, and I'll try to do it ti in a timely manner. And uh, I've got three points, uh, an introduction and a conclusion. And uh, if we don't finish this morning, we'll finish tonight. And uh, amen. Y'all hear me now? Oh, my microphone's turned upside down. There we go. How about that? Is that better? It was falling off. I didn't even know. Sometimes you might have to throw something at me to get my attention. Amen. Luke chapter number 8. The Bible said, And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing glad tidings. That's good news. I got good news for you this morning. That's what we're doing. We're here to share good news. Now sometimes what really is good news, the world might call bad news, but truth is always good news, even if it sounds like bad news. You say, preacher, can you explain that? Sure I can. First time I ever, anybody ever told me that I was a sinner sounded like bad news. But I found out that it wasn't bad news, it was good news. Because before you can ever get saved by the grace of God, the first thing you've got to realize is that you are a sinner. You were born a sinner, and then you sinned by choice. You're not going to hell because of the individual sins that you commit. You're going to hell because you are a sinner. And if you're not saved, before you get saved, you're, you're born. You don't sin. Uh, you're not a sinner because you sin, but you're, you sin because you are a sinner. The first time I heard somebody tell me that I was a sinner and all of my righteousness, all of my good deeds, all, of my, all the things I thought was good and I was doing good, the first time I heard somebody tell me they were all bad. I thought that was bad news, but it wasn't bad news. That was good news. Hey, now I got good news for you this morning. And I went to every village preaching and showing glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. I'm interested by way of introduction, and we're going to get to the parable known as the parable of the sower. But I'm interested this morning, by way of introduction, uh, those who were with him, uh, the twelve were with him, and that does not surprise me that the twelve apostles were with him. They served him, they walked close with him, they forsook the world for him, they forsook their jobs for him, they forsook their families for him. They were with him. When he went to preach, they were with him. When he was telling good news, they were with him. But I am kind of impressed about the rest of that crowd that was with him. Look now in verse number 2 that were with him, and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits. Anybody in here this morning ever been healed of an evil spirit? You say, preacher, I don't believe in spirits. Well, you just learned something. Yeah, there's evil spirits. Watch now. Healed of evil spirits and infirmities. That means shortcomings or weaknesses. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. 
not only are the twelve apostles walking with him, preaching with him, but there are those ladies whom God has raised up out of the depths with him. There are those who were tormented by evil spirits. There are those who were healed by, uh, from infirmities. And there are those who, were, who, who Jesus had cast out seven devils. You say, preacher, that was in Bible days. I got news for you. There's a whole lot of people walking around being tormented by devils today. There are those today in our world just as possessed, tormented by devils today. That's why we don't get mad at sinners for acting like sinners. Why? Because there is a real devil who's influencing them and oppressing them and indwelling them. Now listen, if you're saved by the grace of God, you're sealed. And you know the thing about a seal is it can't nothing get out. The Holy Ghost is on the inside and he's not coming out. But thank God the seal works from both directions. There can't nothing get out and there can't nothing get in. We're sealed unto the day of redemption. One fellow put it this way. He, he, he broke the lock, changed the stock, and one of these days I'm going to get a brand new barrel. But until then, I've been sealed. And you can't break the seal, and I can't break the seal. And bless God, the devil cannot break the seal. I've been sealed, and God's on the inside, and I can't lose him, and I can't let him out, and I can't make him mad enough to cast me out of his family, and the devil can't get in and possess this vessel. Why? Because there's already somebody there. But lost people make themselves, i tell you what, i tell you what's going on. We, we've, we see a lot of fellas come back from wars, and they're coming back from Middle East, you know where the devil's center, or where he works out of. And a lot of what these fellas is facing is oppression. There's devils today. That's all I'm saying. It interests me who's with him. We got anybody today who's been delivered? Anybody in the house today? Now listen, listen. I know we got our, some of us got our Sunday best on. But you ain't always look like that. And if you did grow up in church and you have always looked like that, your heart ain't always been like it is. Well, I thank God. Brother Mike was teaching this morning on, 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 on there being Christians in different stages and weaker brethren and stronger brethren. Hey, listen, we're growing. We ain't always look like we are. Like we do, I'm interested in who's with him this morning. And you say, preacher, my background. Yeah, but look, look at verse 3. And Jonah, Joanna, the wife of uh, Cuzza, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others. Just to name a few, in other words, which ministered unto him of their substance. You know what that means? That means it don't matter what your background is, you can serve the Lord. Now there are some, there are some positions that certain things may disqualify you from. And we're not going to get into that this morning. And there are some positions that are only, uh, that, that are only uh, reserved for men. Scripturally. That's right. We don't, God doesn't call women to preach, but women ought to serve Him. God doesn't ordain, God doesn't call women to preach, but they are no less important. God does not call ladies, uh, we're not to ordain ladies to be deacons, but that doesn't make them any less important. That's just Scripture. It's hard to be the husband of one wife if you're a lady. Yeah, there's some things, God has an order for his house. There's some things that are right and some things, but that doesn't keep them from serving. That doesn't keep them from ministering. 
That doesn't keep them from ministering, taking what they have and what they can do and doing what they can. God don't expect you to do what you can't, but you can do what you can. Amen. Amen. Verse number four. Now, he got all them people together. Verse four. And when much people were gathered together and were come unto him out of every city, he spake by a parable. Some one fellow said this, a parable is... An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. God will put things on the bottom shelf so everybody can reach it. God's, one, one preacher said this way, said put your cookies on the bottom shelf so everybody can reach them. God God will put things in, in, in a manner. He'll deal with you where you are. You don't have to say, well, I don't understand it and I don't get it. He'll make sure we get it. If we want to serve him, he'll make sure he, we understand what we can do to serve him. Verse number five, a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it and some fell upon a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold and, and when he had said these things he cried and he, he, he that hath ears to hear let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? Verse 10, And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. Let me say this. It didn't say apostle. If you'll take up your cross and follow him, then are you his disciples indeed. It didn't say, I just gathered my 12 apostles. What are you saying? There's a group that's there. Those that are his disciples, whether you're a man, whether you're a lady, you can be his disciples. You can learn of him. You can serve him. You can understand the word of God. Why? Because you have the author living on the inside. You say, preacher, I don't understand what this means. God will help you. God can give you the grace to understand the wisdom that's in this book so you can live your life right. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Verse 11, knowing. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Let me say this. There's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed's good. The seed is the word of God. The sower is whoever's doing the sowing. Brother Mike was sowing in Sunday school. Brother Joel was sowing downstairs in Sunday school. Miss Kay was sowing in Sunday school. Uh, uh, Wayne was sowing in Sunday school. And I'm trying to sow right now. And I say this about the sower. There ain't no glory goes in the sower. Anybody can, anybody can sow. Anybody can throw seed. I, I know this, I know, I, I'm sure of this, I'm confident of this. There's a whole lot of people Mike can sow better than me. I know that. I've heard them. But there ain't nobody sowing better seed. That's right. There ain't nobody on the face of this earth, in this country, in another country, sowing better seed this morning than what you're getting. The seed is the the. Word of God. That's why I don't want some kind of transliteration. I don't want to know, I don't want to know what some fellow thought God was saying. I want to know what God said. I want to know what thus saith the Lord. That's why I got me a good copy of the King James Bible. Because I want to know what thus saith the Lord. Now, I, I'm not mad at anybody else, but I don't want some transliteration when it filters through somebody's mind and then they put down an interpretation. That's not what I want. I want to know what God said. I used to preach you. You believe that's the only one. I believe it's the preserved word of a living God. Now, seed is the word of God. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. They come and, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which... When the hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, for a, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation they fall away. Verse 14, And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of, his life, of this life, and be, bring no fruit to perfection. 
Verse 15, but that, but that on good ground are they, which is in honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. The seed is the word of God. The sower is whoever's sowing. And the ground is your heart. And I want to preach for just, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you're doing any calculating right now, but there's four types of ground mentioned. And one brought forth fruit. That's 25%. See how smart I am? That's one-fourth. One-fourth of the disciples, one-fourth of those that heard the word brought forth fruit. Now listen, I'm, I'm thinking to get real deep on you. That means three-fourths did not. Three, four, I, I was trying to help somebody, uh, a younger preacher the other day. He said, preacher, it's been a year or so ago. He said, listen, he said, I'm preaching. He said, I don't feel like anything's happening. He said, I'm teaching these young people. And I don't feel like anything's happening. I said, Jesus said it wouldn't be about 25% bring forth fruit. Don't be discouraged. Now, I can be faithful to sow, and I can make sure I got the good seed. It's your heart, it's your responsibility. I want to preach for just a minute on this thought. Where is the fruit? Where is the fruit? Where's the fruit? Been, and I see it, listen, I, I've been sitting in, 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 in gospel, good Holy Ghost preaching for 20 years now. I like it. I like to go to church on Sunday all day, Sunday morning and Sunday night. It's good on Sunday night. Y'all missed something. If you missed last Sunday night, you missed it. It was good. God will help you. I, I got news for you. It's even good on Wednesday night. I got some help on Wednesday night. And I like to go on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and I like to come back on Wednesday night. And if they're having it on Monday or Tuesday or Thursday or Friday, I like to find me somewhere and go on Monday. Tuesday or Thursday and Friday and I know we got work to do but I'm telling you I like it hey, listen I, how many of you would go to McDonald's and buy a Happy Meal and say no you keep the fries I know I paid for them but I don't want them that's what it's like when you've been afforded the opportunity to get, to get help in the morning in the evening and on with anyway I'm moving on I don't want to kill it I know it's Sunday morning but I can't preach to you on Sunday night if you ain't here on Sunday night or Wednesday night if you ain't here on Sunday night. So I'm just going to load your wagon tonight, this morning, and encourage you. I love you. I pray for you. I ain't mad at nobody. Oh, I got good glad news for you. It's good in Sunday school. It was real good in Sunday school. We've got some teachers that are praying and digging and, and, and studying and, and, and taking that book and trying to get a hold of some seed. You say, preacher, I ain't got no fruit in my life. Sometimes it's because you ain't been around where the seed's been sown. Where is the fruit? I'm going to try to take the Bible and point out three things and we'll be done. Number one, some is being stolen by the scavenger. You in church and the seed's been sowed and, and, and the, 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 the work has been done and, and it's, you've got the seed, it was good. But along come the devil and he stole away what God did in your heart. Any of y'all ever planted? Every time I got, when I'm around farmers, I get nervous every time I say the word plant because I ain't never planted much. But I did plant some grass seed one time, some rye. And don't, I, I planted... I planted enough rye grass for four acres in, in a spot about 60 by 40. You couldn't even see the dirt once I got it to come up. But the first thing I did was I planted a whole, I said, man, I'm, a, I, I, I'm, I'm tired of this dirt. I'm going to put some grass out. And I got me a big bag of grass seed. And I, I mean, I covered the dirt with grass seed. I, I put it thick. We're fixing to have carpet sod even we're going to grow sod and and cut it up and sell it we're going to have some grass down here on the lower 60 foot of the lot 
down by the creek was trying to be country living in the city. I was doing my best. All right? And my father-in-law said, you're putting the straw out? I said, no, there ain't no straw. He said, the birds are going to eat us. Ain't no birds within four miles until you put the seed out. <laughs> my God, I ain't never in my life seen so many birds. I planted the seed, and every bird east of the Mississippi and south of the Mason-Dixon line came and fed in my backyard and before I knew it there wasn't no grass coming up because there wasn't no seed left. Big old fat birds ate my grass seed. I did nothing to protect my investment. I had the seed. I had prepped the soil. It was in good shape. But when I, throw, when, I, when I threw the seed out, I, I just left it. Didn't do anything. And along came those dirty, rotten scavengers, and they took my seed away, and I didn't get any grass. God's been sowing some seed here lately. I know He has. And I'm not the only one has been doing any sowing. There's been seed sown here for a long time. And I know some people grown up around sowing. And they've had a lot of seed come and gone. And one of the reasons is the scavenger stole it away. You don't think for one minute Satan's going to let you get the very thing that's going to change your life and help you plant it in your heart and not make an attempt to steal it away? How many times have we sit in a service just like today I know it's a little lower, a little, little bit lower atmosphere today, but, I, 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 but listen, God's working. How many times have you sat in a service just like today when God the Holy Ghost is putting things in your heart? Stop this, start that, comfort here, help here, and God's putting it in your heart, and you go out of here and make no protection or provision to protect your, God's investment in your life, and before you know it, it's gone, and you can't even tell God did a work. You couldn't even tell I planted seed down there. Why? You say, preacher, the devil ain't bothering me. You wait when the seed, when the seed's sown, he'll show up. Something will happen. You'll have a little something go on at, how, at the house after church. Little ruckus will get started between you and your wife or you and your children. You say, preacher, surely not. Oh, yeah. It ain't his fault or her fault or their fault. It's Satan's fault. He's coming in to steal away. Now, listen, you can't lose your salvation, but you can lose your joy. You can't lose your salvation, but you can lose direction. You can't lose your salvation, but you can lose fellowship. You cannot lose your salvation, but you can you lose the strength to do right in the face of adversity. God, over and over again, is putting in our heart the very thing that we need to serve Him in the days of difficulty. But if we make no effort to protect that investment, the scavenger will come and steal it away. Where is the fruit? Some of it's being stolen by the scavenger. You have an enemy. I went and got me some straw and another bag of seed. And I put my seed out and I threw the straw out on top of it. And said, ha. Yeah, I'm a growing grass now. And then I found out in the middle of November when I should have been deer hunting, I was cutting grass. <laughs> what in the world was wrong with me? But we had some, I mean, I'm talking about it was so thick. It looked like some of that shag carpet some of y'all had back in the 70s. I grew up in that stuff. You'd lose a, you'd lose a matchbox car and couldn't find it for weeks. <laughs> some of y'all had some of that green shag carpet. I know you did. No. Number one, some of it's stolen by the scavenger. Number, let, let me give you a verse to back that up. But, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You do know that there's still plenty of lust in your flesh, lusting after all sorts of things. We in this day have equated that word lust with only one subject, but that's not the case. 
There's a whole lot of people lusting after houses and cars. And, and, and listen, I ain't against none of them. Uh-uh. I, I plan on, I, I've been eyeballing, I'm not even going to point out where, but there's a Jeep sitting somewhere in that vicinity. Looks like about a 76 or a 77, maybe even a 78. But my goodness, the way that that hood is just rounded off and them round headlights, it's calling my name. I would love, I would love to set it up on 35 super swampers with a 360 and then header pipes coming out the side. Yeah, and that bikini top with no doors so you can put your foot up and feel the wind when you're driving down the road. That's bad, didn't it? But we better be careful. We'll start working and laboring after things. And I ain't against, I, 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 look, by God's grace, when I get rid of all these youngins, <laughs> I love you boys. <laughs> Tell Caroline I love her too. I just dropped one off in college. I'm getting rid of them, but they're costing me more than they ever have before. Be careful what gets in your heart. Put on Christ. That put on, that's your responsibility. You've got some responsibility when you leave here. Preacher can't fix it all. It's not even my responsibility to live right for you. It's just my responsibility to sow seed. Number two, we're moving along. Oh, it's a, okay, I'm going to hurry, I promise. Some is stopped by the stumbling. Look here now. Look in verse number 13, I believe it is. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in a time of temptation, fall. You know why people fall? They lose their balance. Any one of us can fall. I used to have a lot of balance. I used to stand up on top of the top plate and, and lay off the wall for, for the ceiling joist. And I, I remember, but I wouldn't try that now. Why? Because my balance ain't so good. You know why you fall when you lose your balance? And I'm afraid of falling. You know how come some of us get messed up? It ain't because we want to. It's because we lose our balance. Watch this now. That first guy, the first guy, the, 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 this, the first guy, he's the one that wants to do right but makes no effort once they leave here to protect what God's done. The second guy, this is the man who, who wants to do right, but still wants to do wrong. And the deciding factor is the crowd he's with at the current time. James chapter 1 and verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. This fellow here will shout it out on Sunday morning, and then on Monday night, ain't no telling where, what kind of crowd you might find him with, hooked up with. He'll do the right things on Sunday morning and maybe even Sunday night, but on Monday night, he's drawn away. Listen, you better be careful about being un, uh, uh, double-minded. Singleness of heart and singleness of eye Make your decision. Make your make your uh, make your decision. I'm going to follow Christ and Christ alone. Whole lot of days spent full of regret at the end of someone's life because they invested in organizations other than the church or or functions other than the church. Un stable man, or excuse me, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Number three, and I'm moving on. Some is, where, where's the fruit? i tell you where the fruit is. Some's being stolen by the scavenger. Some being stopped by the stumbling. And number three, some is smothered by the stuff. We in America got a lot of stuff. Even those of us that think we don't have some stuff, we got stuff. Let's see, what it, let's see what the Bible says in verse number 14. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard go forth and are choked, what's these three things, with cares, riches, and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. 
Now listen, there's a ditch on both sides of the road. Now I want to explain to you what this stuff is. That word care, you ought to be managing some cares. That, that's another word for responsibility. You ought to be managing your responsibility, but you better not let your responsibilities manage you. And the reason, you say, preacher, how does my responsibilities manage me when you get too many of them? This is the fella that's got so many irons in the fire, he's being pulled so many different directions that he ain't got the good time to let God do work in his life. Cares and riches. Ain't nothing wrong with riches. We need some riches. Don't we? I done told you before, if you don't, I do. I got three boys to feed and I've seen them eat. You know how much hamburger meat it costs to feed these boys? Yeah, some of you done been there, done that. Ain't nothing wrong, but you got to have some money. But you better be careful money don't get you. Because you'll get so consumed with making it that you are no longer got time for God to work in you. And the pleasures of this life, ain't nothing wrong with pleasure. God wants you to have a good time. As a matter of fact, that's what uh, Solomon said. Be merry, right? We, we might as well enjoy. The, the happiest people on this, in this earth ought to be God's people. Enjoy living. You don't think I'm going to have a good day today? I'm thinking to make me a big old banana split tonight and I'm going to enjoy. Listen, listen closely and I'm going to put it in perspective. Watch this. Cares and riches and pleasures in this life, those are not necessarily bad things. Be careful that you don't let the good things take up all your time so that the great thing that God desires to do in your life cannot be done. Don't let good get in the way of great. Many of people have stifled their potential by that which is good. Now, listen, I, I, ain't, I ain't mad at you. I, I ain't mad at you if you got, if you, I mean, I, I don't even, if, if you got cars and you got lands and you got houses, praise God. I, I, if, I, if I don't get that Jeep, I'd like to have one in 5.0 Mustang. Hello. And I want one I can change the gears in and pop the clutch, what I'm talking about. You know how come them Chevrolet boys spend all that money on that exhaust? I'm trying to get it to sound like a Mustang. <laughs> ain't that right? Huh? Ain't that right? You know that's right. Go ahead and shout and say amen. I can see he's struggling. Some of these Chevrolet fellas are struggling right now because they know that's right. I ain't mad at you if you got, I ain't listen. I'm just, I'm just saying be careful. Be careful. A lot of people have let that which is good take the place of that which is great and God intended for their life. I'm praying all my tithing members get raises. Hello? Why? Because I want to do greater things in these days for the Lord than we've ever done before. I ain't against. Just be careful. Let God take what He's doing in your life and bring fruit that remains. Somebody asked me a question before church. You say, preacher, I just don't know if that book will help me. Asphalt's pretty hard, ain't it? It's, it's pretty, I mean, if you ever fell on it, you know it's hard. If you ever, if you ever skin, skid your bicycle across it, you know it's hard. It'll scuff you up. But you let one seed get in the crack of some asphalt. And that one little old bitty seed will bust that whole driveway up. Why? Because there's power in that seed. You said, preacher, my, my, this, this, strong, this thing in my life is so hard, so difficult. You keep getting in the place where the seed is. And let God put some seed down in your heart for you know it. The things that you're struggling with, God will take that seed and bust that thing up. If you're here today and you've never been saved, I want you to know this. You can be born again. Born not of corruptible seed, but, I feel a little something on this now, 
but of incorruptible by the seed of, forgive me for paraphrasing, of the Word of God. Amen. See, that book will do what you can't do. It will go where you can't go. And save and influence who you cannot influence. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed today.